What's going on guys, Bronwyn from Empire Barbell. Today we're gonna to cover Greg Knuckles' deadlift once per week protocol. It's part of his 28 free programs that he gives uh, as a lead magnet on his website, Stronger by Science. So go ahead and check that out. There's some really good information on there. And we've already covered the squatting and bench portions. He gives once, twice, three times per week recommendations, uh, beginner, intermediate, advanced. There's a lot of information there, so I recommend you guys check that out. Uh, real quick, if this was helpful, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. I appreciate everybody's support. If you hit that notification bell, you're going to get updates as we put content out. So we do three to four videos a week. So thank you for your support, guys. You've been, you've been awesome. So getting into this, the uh, beginner setup right here is a very simple protocol, and it shows how simple beginner training really can be. I mean, the most proven, or I guess the most widely used method is a linear progression where you do the same number of sets and reps you just add five or ten pounds each week you can do that for a very long time so newbies can get away with a ton of work with a lot of variety they can get away with very minimal work as long as you are steadily increasing on the baseline that they set that's really all it takes to disrupt homeostasis in a new lifter so this has a little bit more complexity than a standard linear progression this is a wave so i call it like linear progression with extra steps Five, three, one is very similar. You take a few weeks to run through a range of work where you, you go hard, but at different intervals, different uh, rep thresholds, and then you reset with a little bit more weight. So that's where the linear progression comes in. Over this whole four week block, you see we go from a max 10 to a max eight, to a max five, to a max three. There's an element of auto regulation built in because we're not going off percentages because newbies aren't gonna have a meaningful one rep max. They're not gonna have a meaningful training max because they're not, consistent technically with the movements they have weaknesses they have no business piling on as much weight as they can handle to find what their percentages should be uh, based off of and they inc increase their strength goes up so incredibly quickly that it becomes irrelevant uh, every few weeks so having something auto regulated like this is is uh ideal it's ideal for a new lifter so week one you hit a max 10 so there's some estimation i would get i would say that week one you want to bias uh, like an RP8 or something where you have a little bit in the tank that leaves you room to increase every few weeks. Uh, but this doesn't have to be exact, exact. But get a good idea of a very hard, crisp, technically sound 10 reps. Uh, then you're going to keep the weight the same. You're going to do three sets of five with the same weight. So that's where your volume comes in. And then that's going to drop steadily as you up the weight and as each day you kind of reset what that training max is as the reps drop. So this is a really solid approach. I'm a, I'm a fan of this one. Um, I would say that this goes very easily with something like a squat program. There's no reason you can't squat twice a week with this. There's no reason that you can't focus on other lifts. Uh, as simple, I mean, it's four sets of deadlifts once a week. There's absolutely no reason you shouldn't be able to run that in conjunction with another program. So it leaves a lot of room. I would also, for a newbie, I would have them do some more volume, but you're gonna see how Knuckles uh, prescribes people running through these programs as they get a little bit more advanced. So going into the intermediate program, now we're starting to see percentages pop up. An intermediate lifter is going to have one or a max, they're going to be technically sound, uh, and they will have a, kind of a more consistent idea where their strength is. And you're also gonna see percentages being relevant for a longer period of time because it takes longer to adapt now. So we see this kind of two step forward, one step back protocol. That's what they call it in the practical programming universe. So it's kind of funny to see this mirrored. I don't know if that was an inspiration for this or not, but uh, Ripito has a, a protocol. I've heard it from Andy Baker too, where you do two weeks of volume that are substantial rest. And then uh, that rest is in anticipation of the fourth week where you hit an all out rep set. That's where your intensity comes in. So you see 80% for four sets of five, Big jump up to 90% for a couple singles, 85% for a couple triples. So you only have four working sets here. You have five heavy working sets there. So that's a hard week. Um, you're also going to see this thread of this is essentially speed work. It's some gonzo volume just to get you more touches. Again, more fine technique. So just six triples go 60, 65, then 70%. Uh, and that 70% represents kind of the recovery week. And then bent rows are thrown in as accessories. So now we're starting to see how this is more of like a logical progression for an individual lifter if they were to spend time here, then go here, then go here, more so than it is beginner, intermediate, advanced in a very universal term. I hate the term advanced because uh, advanced lifters are, are gonna run the gamut. There's gonna be so many different rules that they have to follow and it all depends on how they train to get there. An advanced lifter who is very specific uh, to the, the competition lifts, who has very tightly controlled 
uh, volume and intensity recommendations that are set out on a spreadsheet, they're going to adapt a lot differently as an advanced lifter than somebody who, let's say, grew off of more bodybuilding based protocols or more uh, volume based or, or uh, variety based protocols. So it's very different for the individual. So this shows that for advanced, it's the same protocol. He just throws in a bunch of extra volume, which when you think of like the, the best deadlifters in the world, by the time you're deadlifting 800 pounds, there's some different things you have to do than when you were a 600 pound deadlifter. Um, so this doesn't directly address that, but then again, it's not really supposed to. This is just the logical conclusion. You spent some time as an intermediate in here, you ran through this an indefinite number of times, then all of a sudden you find things get stale. So now you start to kick it up a notch with volume and this volume is easier to recover from. Sumo is very easy to recover from, so it's not necessarily gonna kill your deadlift. Um, rows, shrugs, hip thrusts for volume all the way down. Uh, that's just a way to, to kick you up uh, out of uh, being stagnant. So that just shows where his logic is there. As uh, you do become stronger specifically with something like a deadlift, uh, I actually think that there's some different implications you're gonna have to follow. I mean, look, if you're an 800, 900 pound deadlifter, you're not gonna be watching this anyways. But for those of you looking way down the road, when you do start to get very, very good, I mean, competitively uh, good with your deadlift, you're gonna notice that you're gonna have to space hard attempts further and further apart. Uh, and even this might have to, uh, have to be retooled a little bit based on what your recovery capabilities are. And it's a very individual thing. It depends on your build, your leverages, um, how much of a beating your lower back takes, how good you are at bracing. Uh, do you use a lot of legs when you pull? Are you very high hipped? There's so many things that are innate to the individual that's going to vary across a big group of people that you can't really put one rule on what an advanced lifter should do. But this is still a logical progression nonetheless, going from beginner down to somebody who is stronger and more competitive. So these gives you this should give you some really good ideas on how to work your training so that uh, you can continue progress in the face of stagnation. Sometimes it's as easy as pushing hard efforts further apart with a recovery week. Sometimes it's as easy as adding in a little extra volume. I know you guys hate your volume, so a lot of you will end up slacking. Oftentimes that is a recommendation for what you guys need. More work while maintaining your recovery capacities. So all in all, I, I like his uh, progression here. I, like, I can see the, the logic in where his head's at in recommending these uh, these changes cycle to cycle. So again, this should give you some good ideas on how to incorporate these type of moves into your own training. So if you try these, uh, go ahead, report back to us. You can go on the forum, empire-forum.com, leave a comment in the comment box, let us know how it went, if you had trouble, and uh, any other questions you have, go ahead and leave them. Until next time, this is Bronley from Empire Barbell. I'll see you.